In this video, I want to talk about stock market indexes. So the first question we should ask ourselves is, why create an index at all? Well, indexes are useful because they summarize information. Think about a grade point index or a grade point average. If you wanted to know how a student has done in their coursework in high school or in college, if they simply listed every grade they received, it would be difficult to sort out what kind of student they were. Now, if they received nothing but straight A's or nothing but straight C's, it would be pretty easy to do. But for most students, there's some variation in the grades. Perhaps you got an A in your English literature class, a B in your calculus class, a C in your chemistry class, um, an A in your sociology class, etc., etc. It would be hard to sort out what kind of student you were. But if you saw the grade point average and it was a 3.5 and if we use the scale from 0 being an F and 4 being an A then you know that's a person who got roughly half A's and half B's or a good solid A B student uh, B plus student if you want to say it that way so you have a pretty good idea of what that means so indexes are nice for summarizing this sort of information we have all kinds of indexes we have the consumer price index which measures a basket of goods that people uh, buy again some prices go up some prices go down but the consumer price index gives us a general idea of what direction prices are moving in is there inflation is inflation relatively low is it is it high etc now in terms of another reason we like indexes is they provide a benchmark for comparison um, again, if you think about grade point average, why do people like that? Well, if you're a college admissions office, you can compare the GPA of different students. If you happen to be recruiting for a corporation, you can compare the grade point average for some of the people who are applying for jobs. So it's a way to compare. In the stock market business, it provides a, a benchmark for comparison. Okay. How well did some mutual fund manager do relative to the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones Industrial Average or some other index? It gives us something to compare to. Okay, rather than just saying, well, this mutual fund went up 12%. Well, that's pretty good. But if everything else went up 25%, that's not very good. So indexes, gives, indexes give us something to compare to. So the two most popular stock market indexes, uh, at least in the United States, are the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You'll oftentimes see it abbreviated as DJIA. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average is made up of 30 large industrial stocks. So it's 30 large company stocks. So it's not a very broad index. And the index is determined by a committee. The committee decides what companies to put into the index. And sometimes they change the index to reflect changes in the overall economy. For example, in 2004, uh, Eastman Kodak, uh, the film company, and International Paper were replaced by Pfizer, the pharmaceutical company, and Verizon. So they were recognizing that pharmaceuticals and that uh, information, uh, telecommunications, internet, the type of stuff that Verizon did was much more a part of the US economy than film. Okay? Film cameras are, are pretty much dead and uh, Eastman Codex actually had a lot of difficulty these days uh, you know, um, becoming a new type of firm. They make some other things, they make some printers and they make some other stuff, but Traditionally, they've been a film company, so that's why they were removed. In 2009, GM and Citigroup were replaced by Cisco and the insurance company Travelers. So again, if you think about GM, GM used to be a very important component of the Dow. In fact, there used to be a phrase that as GM went, so went the U.S. economy. But GM is not as powerful a company as it was before. There are a lot of other automakers. And there was a recognition that, for example, technology 
uh, Cisco, the company that makes those chips that are in most of the computers, most of the personal computers we use, um, was much more important to the overall economy, so they added them. And then in 2012, Kraft, the food company, was replaced by United Healthcare. Again, healthcare has become a big part of the U.S. economy, so the committee wanted that reflected. So, how's the Dow Jones Industrial Average computed? Well, it's actually a price index or a price weighted index. That is, it looks at prices. And the way they compute this is this way. Okay? You take the price of the first stock plus the price of the second stock all the way out to the 30th stock. So you look at those closed prices at the end of the day and then there's some Dow Jones Industrial Average divisor. The reason there's a divisor is they have to do some adjustment for the fact that companies' stocks split, and so we don't want that to change the index. Okay, uh, If you're familiar with a stock split, for example, if you had a stock that sold for $100 and it split two for one, shareholders would have twice as many shares, but the price would be half what it was before. It would be $50 a share. Well, that doesn't mean that, that the market went down. The company simply split its stock. So there's a divisor that's calculated right now. As of uh, uh, March of 2013, the divisor was 0.13021681, I believe. And so if you took all the numbers from the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you added them up, you divided by this number, you should get what the index's number is. Okay. Because it's a price index, expensive stocks have a bigger impact on the Dow than lower price stocks. For example, a 5% move in a $50 stock is $2.50. But a 5% move in a $100 stock is a $5 change in price. And based on this formula, uh, higher price stocks are going to impact the Dow much more. In fact, the way this works, based on this divisor, is that for every dollar change in the index, I'm sorry, for every dollar change in the price of a stock, the index changes by $7.68. So if we have a $1 price increase, the index goes up by $7.68. The second most popular index, or I shouldn't say second most popular, but the second index I want to talk about is the S&P 500. Now the S&P 500 is made up of 500 large industrial stocks. Okay, industrials, transportations, financials. And again, the makeup of the S&P 500 is determined by a committee. So the committee gets together. They will sometimes remove a company from the S&P 500, and they'll add a different company. All right, some small emerging company may not be in the Dow today, but after they grow, if you take a company like a Microsoft or a Cisco, when they first started, they were small, nothing companies. But now they are big parts of the economy, and the S&P may add them or has added them to the, to the index. Now, the S&P 500 is a market value weighted index. So in this case, bigger companies have a bigger influence on the index value. Okay? In the Dow Jones Industrial Average, because it was it used prices, high price stocks had a bigger bigger influence. 
Here it's bigger companies. So a the smallest company in the S&P 500, by small I mean the smallest market capitalization. So take its price, multiply by the number of shares, and that's the market capitalization. That company's not going to have as big an influence on the S&P 500 as a large company. Okay, a company like Exxon Mobil is a very big company. Uh, Microsoft is a big company. Um, Apple was a was a very very big company, but as I as I prepare this video, their stock price has gone down quite a bit over the past few months, so they're not as big a company as they were before. But they were a very large company, and they're still a large company. So the bigger companies get greater weight. So how does this one work? To create the index, we take not the price, but the market value of the first stock, plus the market value of the second stock, okay, on and on for all 500 stocks. Oops. Uh, So that's the market value for the 500th stock. And this is also divided by a divisor. Now, unlike the S&P 500, uh, I'm sorry, unlike the Dow Jones Industrial Average, where it's really easy to find the divisor, if you just Google it, you'll find um, the divisor online. S&P, which is a, a um, company of McGraw-Hill, does not publish the, the divisor. Okay, you can, you can work backwards and figure out what the divisor is, but we're not going to do that. But you can see that a big company has a bigger impact on this, um, on this index. Now, a lot of times people like to use the S&P 500 as opposed to the Dow Jones Industrial Average because it's a much broader index. It encompasses many more stocks than the Dow Jones Industrial Average, okay, 500 versus, versus 30. In fact, if you own any mutual funds, you'll oftentimes find that the, um, that the, the quarterly report will um, compare how the fund is done relative to the S&P 500. They may also compare themselves to some other indexes as well, and an index that is closer to the style of investing that the mutual fund has. So if it's an international fund, they may compare it to some international index. If it's a technology fund, they may compare it to a technology index. But uh, oftentimes, uh, they compare it to the S&P 500 as well. So stock market indexes can be very valuable in terms of giving us an idea of how the overall stock market is doing and you can see that by the way the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 are computed that there are different impacts based on what happens for the Dow high price stocks going up have a bigger impact Okay, or a, a 5% increase in a high price stock is going to have a bigger impact than a 5% uh, increase in the price of a, of a low price stock. For the Dow Jones Industrial Average, if the price of a large company, a big company goes up, it affects the index much more than if the price changes for a smaller company in the S&P 500.